morning, brothers and sisters. Welcome to Morning Heart Devotion. Start off, let's offer a greeting, a bow to our Heavenly Parents, True Parents. 전진 참모님께 겸배 바로 And now to lead us through the family pledge, I'd like to invite up Reverend Milhan Stevens. 가정 맹세 1. 자녀극 주인 우리 가정은 참 사랑을 중심하고 번향 땅을 찾아 번연의 장조 이상인 지상 천국과 천상 천국을 창건할 것을 맹세하나이다. 2. 자녀극 주인 우리 가정은 참 사랑을 중심하고 하늘 부모님과 참 부모님을 모시어 천주의 대표적 가정이 되며 중심적 가정이 되어 가정에서는 효자, 국가에서는 중심, 세계에서는 성인, 천주에서는 성자의 가정의 도리를 완성할 것을 맹세하나이다. 3. 천여국 주인, 우리 가정은 참사랑을 중심하고 4대 심정권과 3대 왕권과 황족권을 완성할 것을 맹세하나이다. 4. 자녀극 주인 우리 가정은 참사랑을 중심하고 하늘 부모님의 창조의 상인 천주대 가족을 형성하여 자유와 평화와 통일과 행복의 세계를 완성할 것을 맹세하나이다. 5. 자녀극 주인 우리 가정은 참사랑을 중심하고 매일 주체적 천상세계와 대상적 지상세계의 통일을 향해 전진적 발전을 촉진화할 것을 맹세하나이다. 6. 자녀극 주인 우리 가정은 참사랑을 중심하고 하늘 부모님과 참부모님의 대신 가정으로서 천운을 움직이는 가정이 되어 하늘의 축복을 주변에 연결시키는 가정을 완성할 것을 맹세하나이다. 7. 천여극 주인 우리 가정은 참사랑을 중심하고 본연의 혈통과 연결된 위하는 생활을 통하여 심정문화 세계를 완성할 것을 맹세하나이다. 8. 자녀극 주인, 우리 가정은 참사랑을 중심하고 자녀극 시대를 맞이하여 절대 신앙, 절대 사랑, 절대 복종으로 신인의 일체 이상을 이루어 지상 천국과 천상 천국의 해방권과 석방권을 완성할 것을 맹세하나이다. Thank you very much, Reverend Mohan Stevens. And now to open us up in prayer, I'd like to invite up Bill Lay. Bill Lay. Uh, please join me in prayer. Our loving heavenly parents, our true parents of heaven, earth, and humankind, thank you for this beautiful new morning where we are gathering together as a community uh, from all across North America, North American region, and others joining us as well. Please let us open our hearts at this time. Let us be fully open to what heaven is teaching us right now. This is the moment, the golden age of America, the time of great revival, the time when Christianity awakens and returns, returns to Christ, returns to true parents. Thank you for Dr. Young's ministry. It is a ministry of honesty. It is a ministry of repentance. It is a ministry of opening up to God's sor sorrowful heart and yet finding the joy, the joy of rebirth, finding the joy of our own true selves. So please speak to us this morning. We are ready. We are waiting. We are very happy to be gathered as brothers and sisters. Thank you for your words. I offer this prayer together with this beautiful, holy community of God. In the name of Bill and Tycho Lay, a blessed central family. Adieu.
Adju. Adju. Thank you very much, Uncle Bill. And now, brothers and sisters, we're going to start off this day in gratitude by sharing with one another. If you're by yourself, please take this moment to reflect on what you're grateful for this morning. We'll see each other in a few minutes.
Welcome back, everyone. I hope you had a wonderful sharing. I know I did in my breakout. And so um, I'd like to invite up Benjamin Hack. Benjamin Hack, if you could share with us your gratitude point this morning. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, I was just in the room with Tom Ward and he was sharing about how he went to New Jersey and he saw people that he saw on Zoom live. Well, I was down in Washington, D.C. because both of my daughters are now down in the D.C. area. So I said, oh, hi, I saw you on Zoom. So <laughs> <laughs> I really, one of the, the best, one of the, Things about this morning uh, morning devotion, besides listening to Reverend Young, which is really great, is actually to see brothers and sisters you haven't seen in years, and to really you know share with them um, your situation. So it's really it's really been great. So that's and my gratitude is is morning devotion every morning to see somebody new every day. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much, Uncle Benjamin. Yes, that's what it's been. I, I'm always happy to see people in person um, after seeing them in Zoom for so long. All right, next, I'd like to invite up the Lalone family. Lalone family, share with us their gratitude points this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, good morning. Um, today, I'm just really grateful for, I already said it in my breakout room, but you can see half of our family's not here. Um, they are in Boston with my sister Kathy to join a workshop that's happening. But just not having them here is just a huge gap of our family that's not here right now. And you can really feel it. Um, but yeah, I'm just really grateful that we were able to have the opportunity to have a huge family and that have that kingdom of heaven in our house every single day. Um, and just not having them here is just like a big piece of them gone. So just having the opportunity to have that big family is just super grateful for that. Anyone else? Uh, I'll just share. Uh, um, I'm so grateful for Heavenly Father, two parents and morning devotion. Um, it wasn't an easy task for our children to go to, to America because of the COVID situation, the passports and all that stuff. And uh, uh, with, as parents, we were so grateful that they were able to do all the work and, and actually pray and make conditions. And then they actually experienced God working. And when parents see their kids building their faith and putting the, 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 uh, uh, giving the credit to Heavenly Father and true parents and morning devotion, we're so happy because that, that shows us that they're growing their faith. They're not being told what to do. They're actually exercising it, and now they're going to go to a workshop and build relationships with uh, other second gen. And I think John Sook's one of the uh, counselors there also. So we're so grateful that we can actually give. You know, we're learning stuff, and now we can actually go and participate. So very grateful. And, and two of them were signed up for GPA, and hopefully they can go to GPA also. But uh, we're very grateful and thankful for Dr. Young and uh, everybody that's uh, participating in making this happen. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, would one more person like to share? Right. We'll let the... Yeah, I'll share. Uh, yeah, I would say mine would be uh, along the lines of my siblings as well. Uh, I really appreciate the, the big family that we have. There's always uh, something fun going around the house and something new to hear, it, I guess. And if my siblings are watching, uh, I wanted to say I miss you and I love you guys and hope you're having a good time. Uh, but yeah, like it was, as my sister was saying, there's a huge piece of our puzzle in our family when just even one sibling is gone. So when there's three, uh, as you can tell, there's uh, quite a big piece of our family missing. So uh, I do appreciate my, my parents for giving us such a big family. Um, I wouldn't ask uh, for a different family and I really appreciate uh, what God has given me, so thank you. Wow. I hate feel your longing heart for your siblings. Thank you. Thank you for sharing, let alone family. All right, brothers and sisters, as you may have noticed, Dr. Young is not here. He's on his way to Alaska. 
That's right. He's on his way to Alaska, and then he'll be flying back to New York for the Filipino Leadership Summit. But he did, as usual, prepare a message for us. So let us prepare our hearts and mind to welcome our beloved Dr. Chon Shik Yong. Annyeonghaseyo. Good morning. Good morning. My dear brothers and sisters, clergy and ambassador for peace, 안녕하십니까? Today, I'd like to talk about my last moment on earth is uh, approaching. Uh, I got uh, some content from Truman's memoir. I think this is really one of the very significant content. So let's study a mother's word. I'd like to invite our heavenly honey to read. The foundation for our breakthroughs in the Kremlin and North Korea also includes the selfless work of European members. One day in the early 1980s, we received a one page letter from one of them. It concluded with heart rending words. My last moment on earth is approaching. This is the last greeting I give you here on earth. I will meet you in the spirit world. Please live a long and healthy life. This young man was behind the iron curtain in a communist prison. And this was his final letter written just before his execution. The instant I read it, my body stiffened as if my blood had turned cold and blue. My tears froze. I couldn't say anything. I felt like the fabled woman, Mang Busok, who died and turned to stone. I just stood there. My husband and I had to quietly, secretly hold such beloved people in our hearts. As the true parents of all people, our path with theirs was perilous and desperate. Unable to talk with anyone about such things, we could only weep inside and proceed with broken hearts. Thank you, Heavenly Honey. There are many souls who went to spiritual world without name and without light for the sake of the will of heaven. True parents said that they will take responsibility for and love them forever, even if they go to spiritual world. True father went to the prison, as you know, more than six times. True parents came to pay indemnity after overcoming the inevitable hurdle of death. There were also innumerable indemnity and sacrifice of our ancestors. Until the foundation of our present day was laid. In this sense, we must unconditionally respect and serve our seniors who worked and suffered more than anyone else. And you need to inherit their sacrifice. I think our movement, especially our second generation and third generation, we need to know that our senior blessed family, brothers and sisters, how much they gone through incredible sacrifice and devotion. Also, you know, to lay the you know to lay foundation for us, our ancestors, how much they gone through incredible suffering and difficulties. That's why, you know, as a second generation, third generation, we really need to respect them through respecting. We can have inheritance. You know, to inherit was the best way. You need to respect. When you respect them, you can have inheritance. When you have that kind of inheritance, 
automatically you can develop. Automatically you can develop. That's why respect, inheritance, and development need to go through the process. True parents ask those who worked hard for God's will to persuade and bring back those who left the church. That is a father's heart and mother's heart. When father and mother hear someone left the church, even though they work so hard when they join church, you know, from earlier time, and father and mother get to know them, they left the church. And father and mother, they were so sad. And father and mother talk to the, some of the senior members, go back to their home and bring back. Please encourage them and tell them how much true father, true mother love them. No matter what, you need to persuade them, persuade them, and bring back again. That is the heart of the, our true parents. <clears throat> I already explained many, many times. God's salvation is a total salvation. It will save everyone without exception. No one should remain in hell. You know, someone left the church, even though they contribute so much, you know, in our earlier church. Father and mother said, I have to be responsible for them. Their sacrifices, their contributions remain forever. As, the, as a father and mother, I need to remind them. I need to remember them. I need to recognize them. Then it is the heart of our true parents. Doesn't want to, you know, uh, they want to really save without exception. That's why Heavenly Father and true parents' concept of the salvation is total salvation. Nobody remains in the hell. Even though you betray God and betray true parents, even though you become the enemy, the heart of the parents, the heart of God, want to save everybody without exception. Because of such kind of a parental heart, someday, all his children come back to God's bosom. That's why we need to have that kind of a parental heart. Even though you misunderstand me, persecute, persecute me, criticize me, blame me, even though you become the, my enemy, still embracing and forgiving. This is the heart of parents. And also the God's love is a love of parents who love every single one of them. God's love is a love without exception as well. God's love is total love. Nobody missing. God's love, God's love shines on everyone like the sun and moon. Does not matter, you are enemy, does not matter, you are black people, white people, yellow people. You know, the sun shines on everyone, each item of the old things. God's love is like air given to everyone, does not matter who you are. We too should love everyone with the feeling that we love every single one of them. You need to become a champion of love, loving even your enemies. That's why I really love our true parents' concept of salvation. Total salvation. Nobody remain in the hell. And the heart of the parents embrace everyone as a their own children, no one missing. Total investment, total love. If we have that kind of parental heart, love anyone, including enemy, 
if we have the concept of total salvation, I am telling you, our heart, the level of our heart is a completely different dimension. Okay, please read. Teacher, I will meet you in the spirit world. April 23rd, 1976, USA. You should all know that our brothers are fighting for their lives behind the Iron Curtain under the communist regime. One person sent a final letter saying, teacher, my last moment on earth is approaching. This is the last greeting I give you here on earth. I will meet you in the spirit world. Was there anyone who stood up against communism? I think it was only us. My dear brothers and sisters, some missionaries die in prison. Just now, you know, Father talking about. Someone got all kind of the torturing and finally passed away. Where do you want to die? When you take your last breath, I always think about that. I am so inspired to hear Reverend Johan Nee's testimony. He always saying that one of the, his wish is what he said. He wanted to die on the sermon while preaching the word of God. Oh my gosh. How about Dr. Young? What do you think? When you take your last breath, where do you want to die when you take your last breath? Someone ask me, then I can say that I am a missionary. I want to die while traveling the world until the last moment. Until the last moment, I want to come God's message. I'd like to introduce who is God. I'd like to convey our true parents' message, how much our true parents love all mankind. Okay, continue. Ebony, honey? Honey? Yes. There are many missionaries who were executed while working to develop the Soviet Union or its satellite country. They died for God's will. There are many people who were tortured and spent three, four, or seven years in prison. I'm receiving that kind of report. Who can they talk to? A person who I don't even know looks at Korea, a country in Asia, and goes on the path to death saying, goodbye teacher, I'll go first. And I know the way of those missionaries who pray like that. How can I sleep comfortably on my four sides? You have to know that. Thank you, Heavenly Honey. There are three great enemies we have to fight. First, it is a fight against the communism. Communism, communism is a doctrine that asserts that there is no God. There is no peace in this world unless communism is stopped. Communism is still prevalent. We need to demonstrate thoroughly that God is alive and works, both theoretically and through the practice, we need to show God is a living God. This is one of the very important mission. This is also this is one of the one of the uh, 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 this is the one thing we need to fight with this enemy. Secondly, it is a free sex culture. Satan is ruling the world with this free sex. The only way to deal with this uh, is uh, absolute sex. We need to create a culture of absolute sex. We need to teach them that the absolute sex of God is 
our eternal home. And then thirdly, it is a culture of the you know, selfishness. This must be turned into altruism. We need to teach them how to live for the sake of others. These are three great enemies we have to fight. First one is communism. Second is what? Free sex. Third one is what? Culture of selfishness. Because of that, many of our brothers and sisters, missionary, gone through incredible suffering. And someone completely become sacrifice. Okay, uh, go back to again through mother's word of from her memoir. For many years in Korea, whenever our members gathered, sooner or later, a lively discussion would take place about our movement strategy. We must turn our eyes to the wider world now, someone would say. Another would retort, isn't it too early? We don't even have a church building here in Korea. And a third would join the fray. Okay, so we build an attractive building, but if it's only for Korea, will God like it? Of course, my husband and I were well aware of the issues and knew that both evangelizing internationally and building a strong church in Korea were important. But we steadfastly chose the world over Korea. And as a result, the appearance of our first churches remained shabby. Up until the 1980s, we could not present to the nation even a single decent church building. Our members might have wished to have a place where they could gather with guests and comfortably hold services, but it was not to be. Small A-frame structures with green roofs were all we had. Thank you, Heavenly Honey. And then one more. In the public square as well, People ridiculed us, asking why we and our members kept talking about restoring the world when we didn't even have a decent church building. From a humanistic perspective, they had a point, but they did not know the principle. Our church was created for a higher purpose, and we put working for humanity and the world first. The salvation of the world took precedence over our task in Korea. Thank you, Heavenly Honey. And today's Father's work, the topic is a person God can trust. Heavenly Honey, please read. The way to receive God's sympathy. When you make a mistake, you have to admit you made a mistake. Let's say your mistake is numbered a 10 don't go and say, Father, I have made a mistake up to number eight. That will not do. You have to be honest in front of God, who has seen you make a mistake up to 10. God sees you make mistakes up to 10, and if you feel the pain of having made a mistake up to 100, when you stand in front of the position of saying, I have made an unforgivable unforgivable mistake in front of heaven, please send me away. Then what will happen? When you do this, your heart is able to be on the same wavelength as God. In God's eyes, your mistake numbers 10. And when you are really honest and feel the guilt of having the mistake of up to 100 saying, Father, I have no excuse. As you try and run away from God, you cannot get away. Instead, when you stand in such a position, you will receive God's sympathy. Isn't that so? Thank you, Heavenly Honey. Very important guidance. It is really one of the you know, crucial you know, guiding from the Father. When you make a mistake, including me, I, I also made a lot of mistakes, maybe you too. When you make a mistake, 
you have to admit you made a mistake. If you can do this, you are a truly, truly humble person. Your arrogance is the real reason you cannot admit to your sins. You have to be honest in front of God. Confess your sins like the thief on Jesus or right. Jesus, no, no, the thief, the thief on Jesus right. I deserve to go to the hell. I commit sin. I am murderer. I was a thief. I deserve to die. He really honest and confessed to Jesus. That's why Father say, don't make excuse or run away from your sin like Adam and Eve. After Jesus, who was the first person to enter paradise, it was not those of good faith who had been prepared. It was the sinner of all sinners, the thief on Jesus' right. That's why important is a confession. Honestly confess, this is I am. Heavenly Father, Jesus, I am this kind of person, but in front of you, you are my Father, you are my Lord. You know, my situation is like that. When you frankly confess, honest, this is the first point. As we know, God is a forgiving God. The problem is that you are trying to avoid admitting the sin you committed. The reason you are having difficulty confessing after you uh, committed a sin is because you still have some arrogance in your heart. Those who are arrogant, very, very difficult to confess. If you mistake was number 10, Father said, then you should confess to a number 100. And be prepared to endure any suffering in order to indemnify your sin. If you commit a sin, you need to pay indemnity willingly. Heavenly Father, I commit sin. I don't want to avoid. Spiritual world is everything is clear. I cannot run away. I cannot avoid. And before going to spiritual world, I'd like to confess my sin. Because you are my father. I, I am ready to pay any indemnity according to my commi committing sin. If you cannot hide your sins, you cannot hide your sins in spiritual world. It's not about losing faith. However, if you confess, Father said, heaven will take responsibility every day. When right thief of the Jesus, he confessed and recognized, you are my Lord. You are my father. And his sin become zero. And Jesus allowed him to enter the paradise. Who entered the paradise first after Jesus? He was a murderer. He was a thief. That's why when we confess honest in front of the law, in front of the Jesus, in front of the heavenly palace, our sin is just not, nothing. Like a bowel movement. Nothing. No value. You should think how could a sinner like me ever receive forgiveness from God? You should regard yourself as a sin of the sinners who violated God's heart. Heavenly Father, I hurt you so much. I violated your heart so much. Don't beg for mercy, but instead live your life paying for that sin. In front of God, you should regard yourself as an eternal unfilial child. If we truly have that kind of humble heart, that kind of confession, 
You recognize I'm the seed of the sinner. I am eternal, unfilial child. Truly confess your sin and have that kind of humble attitude. If you do this, God will forgive you and giving you his grace. You will be entirely healed by him. And God talk to you, true parents talk to you, your sin is nothing as long as you confess to me, honest to me. You, as long as you have such a humble attitude, God is a God of forgive, forgiveness. Heavenly Father want to see our attitude. When you stand in such a position, you will receive God's sympathy. Just like the thief on the right, you will be cleansed of the, all your sins and you will go to kingdom of heaven with the true parents. In conclusion, if there is a relationship between God and me of the heart of the parent and child, my sin is nothing. As long as I build up the relationship with the heavenly parents, true parents, as a child and parents, once I set up that kind of hardesty and inseparable relationship, my sin is nothing. So in the end, what's our conclusion? Heart, hardesty relationship. You already know the Bible story. Prodigal son came back home. His father did not ask what you made a mistake. And the prodigal son came back and then I am unworthy in front of you and cry and cry and repent. And father embrace him. Give him new clothes and then have the festival. You know, this is the heart of God. Okay, please read. Excuses are unnecessary in front of God. If God sees you commit a sin valued at 10, and you feel the guilt of having committed a sin valued at 100, you can receive grace from this situation. Therefore, excuses are unnecessary in front of God. Because God is looking at us openly, you have to be honest in front of God and say, I am like this. You have to feel this is needed more than anything. Some people make many excuses even though they committed wrongdoings. They are not honest. When you look at the question of whether honesty is a standard decided by the self or a standard decided by the public, the person who makes various excuses is giving the excuses based on the standard he decided for himself. He is not making, making excuses based on the standard decided by the public. A person who makes excuses based on the standard decided by the public will not prevail. Thank you, Heavenly Father. If God sees you commit a sin, valued a 10, and you feel the guilty of having committed a sin valued at 100, you can receive grace from this situation. Excuses are unnecessary in front of God because God is looking at us openly. You have to be honest in front of God and say, I am like this. Some people make many excuses even though they committed wrongdoings. They cannot be honest because they still have arrogance in their hearts. God is the standard of judgment. The standard of judgment is not the law, nor our person character. It is God's heart. If you place God's heart, at the center of all types of standards of judgment, 
it will always be accurate. What about the standard of a filial piety? Is what are no, you know, what I am doing filial or not? A person who makes excuses based on the standard decided by public will not prevail. Very important guidance by our true parents. And then I want to make summarize what is the way to receive God's sympathy. You have to admit you made a mistake, means confession. Secondly, you have to be honest in front of God. You can tell a lie, you can hide, you can avoid, you can lie or the run away on the earth. But once you enter spiritual world, everything open. Cannot hide anything. But also what is important. If you bind on earth world, you can bind in heaven. Everything settled down while you are on the earth. And you are hiding. Okay, I can settle down in the spiritual world. It is almost impossible. That's why while you are on the earth, when you are wearing your body, it is a really important point. Everything settle down while you are on the earth. That's why true parents always give us many, many opportunities. Not take it for granted. Always feel sorry, my. I am really unworthy person. I am really unfilial sons and daughters. You do not excuse. Fallen men always try to excuse them. because of Adam, because of Eve, because of Archangel, because of this person, because of my husband. Because of my parents, because of my able, because, 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 because. Then who are you responsible for? You need to show your heartfelt repentance and attitude. Heartfelt repentance is really important. When Jesus came to the earth, so what, did he do? what is his first declaration? Repent. And John, John the Baptist came to the earth, so what is his first word? Need to repent. Same process and same course, you know, to go back to God's person. Need to show your heartfelt repentance. Without showing your heartfelt repentance and attitude, you never have experience of the rebels. You cannot become new guy, new Adam. You cannot become new Eve without artistic repentance. When God sees your mistake up to 10, and if you feel the pain of having made a mistake up to the 100, even though you make small mistake, then, but you feel it, oh, this is really, I hurt God's heart. Truly, you have that kind of heart and attitude. God surely sympathize you. I have made an unforgive, unforgivable mistake in front of heaven. Please send me away. I deserve to pay any indemnity. There is a way to pay indemnity. I will do that. Heavenly Father, love that kind of honesty, that kind of attitude. You need to confess that I am a sin of the sinners. You need to find an even more miserable path than the one you are currently on by your own accord. This is the way to receive God's sympathy. Today's uh, youth ministry, I'd like to uh, uh, show you some reflections from Young Sun Queen. You know that she's one of the main staff of the, our ACLC. <laughs> I love her so much. Uh, from first, uh, from you know her first time of reading one of our exposition of the divine principle manual hundred times, I really glad 
she really practice what I'm saying. So, uh, of course, now I know that many second generation, many of the Japanese members are doing same kind of a condition. So what she learned from one hour reading con uh, EDP condition, let's see her reflection. I'd like to invite Heavenly Honey to uh, re uh, read again. Okay. Hi, Dr. Yon. I read EDP 100 times, and this is my reflection. I am now trying the three-hour lecture manual. It is much harder. My parent, parents read EDP every day as well. Thank you for your guidance. I started reading the one-hour exposition of the Divine Principle Manual, EDP, on May 16th, 2021, and I finished reading it on July 5th, 2021, at 1.38 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. My fastest time was only once at 26 minutes, and my longest time was a little over an hour. I started reading the EDP because there was someone whom I wanted to pray for because I felt so indebted to this person and out of gratitude wanted to support this person in some way. If not physically, then maybe spiritually. This person enjoyed eating food and since I was not able to give them anything, I tried to read EDP in the morning, noon and evening so as to signify a physical meal, except it was a spiritual meal. There were times when my schedule was so busy, I had to miss a day or only do it once or twice, but I would at least offer a prayer saying that I was sorry I was not able to read that day and try again the next day. And there were days when I had time where I would read four or even five times of EDP. From this experience, I realized what it must feel to be a mother or a father who tries to feed or provide for their child, but is not able to, no, no matter how much they wanted to. My heart towards my own parents deepened, and I appreciate them even more for taking care of me. Each time I started reading the EDP, I would pray to Heavenly Parent to spiritually nourish this person and raise them to become a true child, sibling, spouse, parent, grandparent, and great-grandparent, and also a true child, patriot, saint, and divine child of our Heavenly Parent and true parents. At the same time I was reading World Scriptures 2, it was good that I was reading World Scriptures at the same time because it gave me a greater explanation from our true parents on the central figures in the Bible, more about democracy and communism, the deep heart found in the family, how precious and why Christianity and Christian clergy are chosen at this time. I was also participating in American Clergy Leadership Conference, ACLC's chosen Monday night seminars, where Archbishop Stallings, Dr. Mark Abernathy, Dr. Luan Rouse, and many other ACLC clergy lectured on true family values. At times, they would biblically explain the true family values, T. FV, a condensed and practical application of divine principle in the realm of the family four position foundation and use key words that explain things very well. Archbishop Stallings once said in a presentation on session two of true Fa family values, what went wrong. It was not the actual fruit or pear in the tree, rather it was the pear on the ground that caused the fall. Christian clergy teaching the true family values has great importance because they are biblically prepared to explain divine principle. And with the right heart and with the Holy Spirit, they are able to truly move the hearts of the audience. 
After reading EDP 100 times, I was able to finish my Unification Thought online course through the Unification Theological Seminary. Through the foundation of reading EDP 100 times and the weekly True Family Value Seminars, I was able to realize the frustration and desperation of God, our heavenly parent, has for human beings to complete the three blessings or the three great responsibilities and promised blessings God had prepared. Throughout history, people have worked on becoming a person of character, formed good families and stewardship over creation of some sort. But without understanding the heart of God, the heart of hope at the time of creation, heart of sorrow at human beings fall, and heart of pain of persecuted righteous saints, prophets, and central figures. And doing all these things with God and for God, it is not the proper way. One time, two Mormon volunteers came to my house to witness to me. But because I was reading the EDP, I had the confidence and preparedness, preparedness to explain what I believe. I think when you read the EDP, the spirit world around you change and attracts people to you. So you may need to be aware and ready for such things to happen. Through reading the EDP 100 times for the sake of this person, I felt that it was me that received much spiritual nourishment and was raised up in so many ways. Usually I am only able to conceptually understand true parents' hundike material and through my simple and basic reason and logic, be able to see why things have to be a certain way because it made sense, at least to me. But I have always been aware that my heart has always been lacking in expressing itself through true love. I have prayed to God about this. And I think through this condition of reading EDP 100 times has allowed me somewhat to understand and feel the meaning of some of God and true parents' words and teachings. I think the Bible verse of Matthew chapter 7, verse 7, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you is appropriate here and that God truly answers prayers at the right time when we are responsible enough. But after this EDP accomplishment, I was glad to have accomplished it, but at the same time, sad because it was finished and that I could not give to that person any more with this condition. This helped me realize what true parents meant when they said, True love gives and continues to give and then grieves when it cannot give anymore. There were times when I doubted my own condition, but in the world scriptures in several chapters and on page 826, there was a passage that said that we must keep our promises to God. I remembered being in a YCLC Bible study for a short time. And we read that in the Old Testament of the Bible, the Jewish people had a covenant with God, which meant that there was a pact between them and God that was unbreakable. I also remembered a Christian song called Waymaker. And one part of the lyrics said, Waymaker, Miracle Worker, Promise Keeper, Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. From this foundation of my past experiences and studies, I was reminded to keep my promise to God and to have integrity with my words that I promised a heavenly parent. It also reminded me to strive to resemble heavenly parent as well. I remember the motto for Vision 2020, our true parents gave to all of us, which read, let us become true owners of Chanukuk, who practice true love and re resemblance to our creator, the heavenly parent. 
from reading EDP 100 times, I came to realize the keeping of one's promise is a form of love, a form of sincere devotion and love, and a form of yojum. As it is a long-suffering endurance to fulfill the subject partner's wish, dream, aspirations, and hopes. In addition, from this realization of promise keeping, I was able to understand an entry level of the desperation God has in trying to restore human beings to their original state before the fall, as well as the true love God has that continuously strives, fights, and endures all for us, for human beings, because they are our absolute, unique, eternal, and unchanging heavenly parent. A song came to mind when I realized this, which is called, Because I Am Your Mother. It came from True Parent Sunwa Performance. Wow, it is a really, really beautiful Fundal reflection. Yes, my brothers and sisters, you know, one of the, uh, the champion, Fundal champion, Mr. Chayan testimony, he say that daily basis of offering Fundal Jongsong. Jongsong means the need to do continuously without missing one day. Stopping means that he say every day. Fundal is an everyday resurrection. Every day, Fundal is Every day grows. Fundok time is a time when God's love is infused into me, pouring eternal bliss into my spirit body. I really appreciate Young Sun, Queen, and then also Heavenly Honey, beautiful your reading. Let's practice Fundok K and follow that kind of model style. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Young, for that beautiful, beautiful message and Youngson for, for that testimony. And now, brothers and sisters, let's take this time to share our reflection with each other. If you're by yourself, please take this time to reflect on what you just heard um, from today's morning devotion. We'll see you all in a few minutes.
Welcome back, everyone. I hope you had a wonderful, heartfelt sharing in your breakout to see a lot of smiles in this front page of Zoom. I'd like to call on Diane Abendroth, Diane Abendroth, to share with us her reflections from today's morning devotion. Uh, please unmute yourself. How's that? There we go. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, sorry. Hi. Oh, I, well, I guess I, I was saying that um, I had two parts of reflection. The first part was that when Father... I mean, when Reverend Young talked about being um, um, being able to repent a hundred times, a hundred percent, I forget how it was worded, but for something that was a, a 10% mistake, uh, it just somehow it guided me into realizing things even just from yesterday that I needed to repent for that had kind of passed me by in my consciousness, you know? So um, I felt, I feel very, really uh, happy to, to realize my mistake because that's, that's where you start to be able to repent for it. And, and, um, make a change, right? You can't make a change without that. So I, I really appreciate that, um, you know, what, what Reverend Young was saying there and um, then to, the, to be able to be guided, led to use it. <laughs> oh, my husband reappeared. <laughs> and, um, and then um, the other thing I was, I was, so uh, I really created a lot of reflection to hear how Young Soon was Young Soon. Yeah, Young Soon. Young Soon yeah. was um, was able to do that condition that you know do the, all that reading. I mean, how focused her heart and mind must be to be able to take every minute, even in a in a a normal busy day where she's doing many other activities and, and even as, as, as a meal, you know, a spiritual meal that she's giving for this person. I, I just, um, for, I really have to think about, it really helps me to th make me think about how to have that kind of life that, um, that I could, you know, take every minute. I think I feel like I would feel so pressured by trying to make such a big offering, and and I would collapse under the pressure, or or just not be able to do it well. So it really is uh, soul searching. Creates soul searching to me to um, hear how she. Um, what she actually did, even what she did and and how she did it and her motivation. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Aunt Diane, for sharing. Uh, next, I'd like to call on Romina, Romina Roman. If you could share with us any reflection you had from today's morning devotion. Good morning, Resfred. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> Hi. Yeah, so... I'm very, very moved by the morning devotion, and I'm actually very grateful to be logging in in Zoom. I haven't since the time change in Arizona, uh, but um, it's exciting to be back and see everybody's faces here. Um, yeah, I was sharing in our breakout room that uh, one of my biggest reflections for this morning is um, really Dr. Young. Um, bringing up the point of the, the true repentance and the value it has for God, I think is so precious. Sometimes Satan just whispers in our ear that our sin is too great for God to accept us back. But for as long as we are very 
uh, deeply repentful and loving toward God, and we know that, you know, we have heard God's heart, God is willing to embrace us back. No sin is great enough to keep us away from God. So I really appreciate he brought that because many times we do feel guilty about things we do or don't do. And uh, also, the, uh, I'm very moved by our sister's heart for read the 100 times. Um, that goes to show that it's so much better to put all of our energy into building something versus into fighting something. Sometimes we're always trying to fight all the wrong things, but actually it's way more valuable to put our energy into build all the right thing. So, yeah, I'm very grateful for the opportunity. Uh-huh. Thank you for your reflection, Romina. Very insightful. Thank you so much. And now, brothers and sisters, if you like what you're hearing today, please feel free to invite your friends, your family, your trinity, your community to this morning devotion experience. And if you're watching on Facebook or in Zoom, you can join this Facebook or YouTube. You can join the Zoom room by going to edu.familyfed.org. Go to the bottom and the Zoom link should be right there. And also, if you're feeling especially inspired, there'll be a link in the chat for you to donate to support Morning Devotion Ministries. And now it's my honor to welcome up for our musical offering today, Irene Sasao. Irene Sasao, if you could please unmute yourself. Hi, good morning. Good morning, everyone, brothers and sisters, and Dr. Young, who's flying all across the sky. Um, Good morning, and I'm grateful to be here. I'm grateful um, to have heard this testimony about the butterfly uh, missionaries. And it's very interesting because the the song I chose is based upon um, Isaiah 6, 8. And the words of Isaiah 6, 8 is, uh, I also heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Then I said, here I am, send me. And um, I really feel that the missionaries um, uh, who went and did that sacrifice so much um, really heard the call of God, like Isaiah, and the central figure of the past. So um, I'm grateful. So I want to sing a song um, called Here I Am, Lord. Um, I only got this song recently, and um, and I uh, heard it in my unit, United Mission, United Methodist um, Church, and I'm going to use a recording of that song sung by our congregation. And you hear a, a nice, strong male voice. That's the minister James McGee, who I love very much. He's a very precious son of of God, and. Um, I I hope you can uh, enjoy this song or can uh, understand, I guess, the, the heart of the person who wrote this, who was really thinking of God and also his responsibility as, uh, I guess, Chaksarang, <laughs> God going his Chaksarang. And anyway, I no more to say. <laughs> okay, uh, I hope this works. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, whoop, whoop, whoop. Whoop. Hold on a second. Okay, I think I got it now. Whoop. Maybe not. Hold on a second again. I'm sorry. By the Lord of sea and sky. Uh, you you muted yourself, uh, Miss Irene. You're you're muted. Could you, um, could you unmute yourself? sorry there we go okay i'm sorry did did you hear what i had said before yes 
Okay, so it's just the song itself you didn't hear. Okay, I'm so sorry to uh, cause uh, difficulty. Okay, um, I hope this works. Okay, <laughs> okay. Here we go. Up. Okay. Oh. Oh gosh, I'm so sorry. Technology and me sometimes don't work together so well. I'm the Lord of sea and sky. I have heard my people cry. All who dwell in dark and sin, my hand will save. I will make the doors of night. I will make the darkness bright. Who will bear my light to them? My will I say, here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard calling in the night. I will
if you lead me, I will hold your people in my heart. Have a blessed day, everyone. Wow, let's get ready to the crowd. That was so beautiful. <laughs> I feel really my mood elevated after Thank hearing you. your song. So beautiful. Thank you so much, Ms. Irene Sassau, for sharing with us your song this morning. And now, brothers and sisters, to close, I'd like to ask um, Yukihiro Saito-san, Yukihiro Saito-san, to please close us out in prayer. Let's pray. Our dear heavenly parent, our God, and beat up Jesus Christ and victorious two parents in heaven, earth, and humankind. Thank you so much for giving us wonderful, wonderful morning to receive your words through Dr. Young and brothers and sisters. We are so blessed with your word and love every day. We want to be true with your son and daughter in front of you. We made so much mistake in the past. Having parent in front of you, we'd like to be honest and have a humble heart in front of you and confess in front of you. Finally, we would like to be your children. Please bless each of our brothers and sisters and please guide and protect our brothers and sisters and our two parents. Thank you again, this for wonderful opportunity this morning. I offer and deploy with our brothers and sisters in your heart in the name of all you kill and meet the blessed family. Adieu. 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 Thank you very much, Yuhiro san, for such a beautiful prayer. And now, brothers and sisters, this concludes our morning devotion today. I hope uh, whatever you experienced here, we can take and transfer the blessings all throughout the day. I wish you all a wonderful, blessed Monday morning. Have a wonderful day, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye, -bye. Bye. Bye. Bye everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.